All right, so I'm gonna do a quick um, review slash opinion on this motherboard right over here. So building a computer for a customer and we needed a motherboard. So now I wanna talk about motherboards real quick. There's different types, different flavors of motherboard depending on what you're trying to do, what you're trying to go. Um, if you're going to get into gaming, a motherboard like this is more than enough and it's fine. This motherboard costs $75. It's the ASUS Prime B450M slash A. Um, it's an MATX motherboard. And also it's Ryzen 5, uh, excuse me, it's Ryzen 3000 desktop ready. Uh, most of the times if you get the older variants of this motherboard, you have to flash the BIOS. So make sure you have a second gen, first gen Ryzen so you can flash the BIOS over so you can get the 3000 support. Um, a lot of times, like I believe this one, which maybe we'll test later, this one is actually 3000 uh, series Ryzen ready. So when you buy a motherboard, I mean, motherboards can go from anywhere from 60 to, I've even seen them go as high as $1,000. But what do you need the motherboard for? What are you trying to do? If you're trying to do just basic entry level gaming, then a motherboard, well, not entry level, but if you're just trying to do gaming, a motherboard like this is more than enough. Now, if you're trying to do some overclocking, some competitive overclocking, then you're gonna need something beefy. So let's open it up and let's talk about this real quick. All right, I'm a big fan of this motherboard. I've used it for a while and I've never had issues with these motherboards. Now, one of the things that you look at, if you look at the VRM, there's not cooling or anything over there. So this is not gonna be an overclocking motherboard. Have I overclocked a little bit with this motherboard? Yes, but I'm not gonna push it too extreme. The CPU we're using is a non-X version, so we're not gonna be doing any overclocking with it. All right, what I like about this, it has the four gigs of um, DDR, uh, excuse me, not four gigs, but it has four slots for DDR4, okay? Has your M.2 over here, your Ethernet, USB 3.0, I mean, you can use the onboard video card if you want to save more money. But for the most part, this is actually a good motherboard. You can actually put a real good video card in here. I mean, I've put 2080s in here, 2080 Ti's in here with the Ryzen 5 2700X. Never had an issue with it. Now, if you're not big into the whole bling of the motherboard or if you're not going to do some extreme overclocking, you just want to pop in a CPU and just go and play, then this is actually the best way to go. Because if you think about it, we spend $75 on this motherboard. If you want to get something a little more robust with some Wi-Fi, some more bling, some armor, some bigger for features that you're not really going to use or enjoy, then you can actually save that money and put it towards the next step of the video card or the next step of the graphics card. I mean, you could really save anywhere from $50 to $100, which might give you more memory, uh, maybe a bigger hard drive. So you got to think wisely of what you're trying to do with your computer and where can you save money to get the most bang for the buck. A lot of the times, if I'm not overclocking or when I'm building computers for customers, if they're not going to be big into overclocking, I could save about $50 to $100 on the motherboard and get them a bigger M.2, a bigger SSD, uh, upgrade them to a better video card. A perfect example is if I wanted to, we could go from a Ryzen 5 2600 to Ryzen 7 save the money on this and actually for a few more dollars to actually get a better CPU that's going to work good with this. Like I said, this is not an overclocking motherboard. It doesn't have features that you need. If you're not going to run multiple video cards and um, sound cards or whatever type of cards in there, you can actually just get away with this. All you really need is your PCI Express port, which is right over here. You still have your port over here if you want to run your capture card, your Elgato, whatever brand you want. You can pop in one M.2. You got one, two, three, four, five, six SATA ports. You can still run up to 32 gigs of RAM. I think it actually supports up to 16, don't quote, uh, not 16, 64, don't quote me. Still put a beefy CPU cooler on it and you're good to go. Even with this motherboard, even though it's not the fanciest, you still got your RGB header, which is right up over here and you can still run a nice RGB setup on it. So when buying a motherboard, you really need to think about what do I need what am I going to use this motherboard for? And is this the extra money worth it? Me personally, on my personal rig, yeah, I'm one to spring and spend the extra money on all the fancy features. I got like three on my motherboard that I have. I have three PCI Express ports. I only have one video card, so I don't use it. Um, one thing I did spring for was for the um, wireless internet, which I do use and all that stuff. My computer, I do do some overclocking, so having um, coolers on the VRM was important to me. So, yeah. Just something to think about. So when buying a motherboard, just consider what features are you actually gonna use? And if you're building a computer for somebody, think about is the customer really gonna take advantage of it? This motherboard is future proof. We could put Ryzen 3000 series in it. It's solid, it's stable, never had an issue with it. Has enough SATA ports, still do an M.2, but if you're not gonna go crazy, extreme, mega supercomputer, a good motherboard like this for $75 is more than enough for perfect gaming and the extra money is actually worth spending towards the graphics card, bigger storage, or even the next level of the CPU. So um, 
I just want to give my opinion and my advice and my suggestions when buying a motherboard. Just really think about what do you want out of the motherboard, what you're trying to do. Yes, better motherboards, you get more performance if you're going to overclock or push it, but if you're not, a good stable motherboard like this will actually get the job done. So comment down below. Let me know your opinions about when you buy a motherboard. Uh, hit the like button if you like it. And thanks for watching, and we'll see what we'll come up with next.